We're back in our Seattle Seahawks franchise, and it's going to be a little bit of a shorter one today as we're going to be looking at all of the stats and awards of Season 2 in this franchise. And a lot of people like to see those things, see how other teams, other players uh, may be playing, especially if they're on different teams than they are in real life. I, I mean, what do you mean in real this is real life. But the first thing to do would be to sim to the playoffs, uh, see if we even won the division. Which, of course, we choked, obviously. Great, we get to go to Detroit and play an 8-9 and nine team in their stadium. That's obviously lovely. We have a first of many uh, thing here as well. And I wonder how many teams made the playoffs. Obviously, uh, the Cardinals went 10-7, and seven, the Rams went 9-7. and seven. To actually take a look at how the standings actually finished out. So you have the Falcons at 14 and 3, the Bengals at 12 and 5. I don't do we really care? I'm gonna quickly sim through this. If you guys really wanted to see, you could pause it. But I really care more about the NFC. Obviously, we're the fourth seed. Uh well, actually, I don't know if that's true. We have the fourth best win total, but I don't think we're actually the fourth seed. Uh the Falcons were the number one with 14 and 3, Cowboys at 12 and 5. The freaking Niners winning three in a row as we lost two in a row. The Cardinals are three in a row, and the Rams are in the playoffs with a 9-7 record who just recently lost. The Lions at 8-9 took the final playoff spot. I'm actually kind of curious to see what happens here with the Niners. So who's the Niners have to play the Cardinals, so in theory, us not winning the division, even though we're not at home, may be a positive because we're playing a lesser team where we would have faced uh, you know, what appears to be the Cardinals if we would have won. I'd rather play the the... Lions, obviously, than the Cardinals, so kind of a little sneaky win if you ask me. But reviewing how our season went, of course, didn't really do a whole lot with the sliders in preseason. So this first game against the Steelers, which and ended 16-9. Anyways, uh, we've played four times, got some thumbnail-worthy picks in there, and of course some uh, restarts to test sliders. Uh, you know, a couple of nice wins early on, and then, you know, we had a pretty nice streak. Then those final two games we dropped. Very close games, both of them, but... Sadly, an L uh, for both regardless. Now it's time to take a look at kind of the biggest L. Hikaru, uh, touch and a pick ratio. Awful. Yards, pretty good though. Pass rating of 78.5. Completion percentage of 62%. Average yards per game, 225.5. Sacked 30 times and it could have been way worse. Uh, yards per uh, attempt is 8.7, which is actually not terrible. Kenneth Walker, though, way less fumbles this year, which we love to see. Did not really run a backup because I'm terrible with the subs. And if Walker is able to be the literal every down back, why not, right? He stayed healthy. He's a god. Keep him out there, pretty much. Metcalf had a really good season. Fant, who did get injured, I believe, a couple of games, played pretty well, almost 1,000 yards. Xavier Moore, zero touchdowns on the entire year, which is just an L from us. 825 yards. Lock it. Really bad season from him. Even Walker over 2,000 yards total. Almost uh, 20 touchdowns plus. Our Sega Whiteside was okay. Jermaine Caldwell only had that one catch, and it was literally last week. Charles Cross, 10 sacks allowed, 7 for Banson, even though it felt like he was way worse than that. Overall, the numbers look good, but it was still an offensive line that really wasn't super great. Jordan Brooks, 141 tackles, 117 for Barton, 102 for Jamal Adams, 96 for Diggs, 90 for Kalen Barnes, believe it or not, with four interceptions. Really good season from him. The boundary corners with nine interceptions each. Jamal Adams with six, Brooks with five, Diggs and Barnes with four, and then two for the rookie Porter, who uh, he had himself a decent little season too. A couple of deflections there. As far as forced fumbles go, Brooks with six, recovered four. Jamal Adams with seven, recovered one. Diggs with two, and Oliver with two, recovered two. Uh, and yeah, I mean, a couple of uh, nice hits there. As far as touchdowns, we probably had a decent few, right? Three for Diggs, two for Brooks, Jones, and Barnes, and then one for Adams, Ed Oliver, Porter, Maffe, and Daryl Taylor. Not a bad defensive season at all. Probably one of the best in the league. Uh, Jason Myers missing four kicks out of 31 is pretty damn good. How many of those kicks we missed one? Though? <laughs> we don't talk about that. But, I mean, that's a really good season, dude. He missed one from each range, which is quite interesting, actually. Dixon's average was bad, but his yard, you know, his actual punting was really good. Uh, Caldwell with over 1,000 yards, him and Swain with kick return touchdowns. Punt returns, not really easy to get before we head on to those awards. So let's take a look at how the rest of the league played. The number one team in the entire league uh, with the Falcons, Desmond Ritter with 5,300 yards, 51 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, a 70% completion percentage, 
over 300 yards a game, a passer rating of 116.7, nine yards per uh, attempt, uh, and he was sacked 25 times. So looking at that yards per attempt, you know, Ricaro actually up there, obviously Metcalf carrying the hell out of that for him, but still, uh, look at some of the other quarterbacks we've seen. Prescott was extremely accurate. Sinclair was on it the Player of the Week award, you know, list pretty much like bi-weekly almost. Uh, his pass rating was under 100. But, yeah, he was uh, a pretty good player for them, obviously, in his rookie year. A couple of really nice seasons. Patrick Mahomes looking like, in my opinion, the MVP frontrunner. Russell Wilson looked pretty good. Josh Allen actually kind of down to a really good. Kirk Cousins was pretty good. Davis Mills, Logan Whitley, 29 for 11. Stafford was decent. The yards are just a little low. Rodgers, really bad season for his standards. Winston was really bad. Uh, of course, Phelps, the rookie, 27 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, 4,000 yards. How many games did he miss? Because we know he was injured. So he missed at least three games, which, I mean, I don't think it would have been on par for anything crazy, but maybe a rookie of the year award that he's just not going to get because of the injury. But still a lot of really good seasons there. And speaking of really good seasons, maybe not the touchdowns, but as far as pure talent goes and the yards and all that, he was the best. Surprisingly, though, not the number one tackle breaker. Number two, which is still really good, but Christian McCaffrey beating him by two yards. He was obviously number one, but uh, Najee Harris not far behind. Some really good rushing numbers here as a lot of players were over 1,000 rushing yards, which is pretty absurd. Uh, as far as yards per attempt goes, Henry, the number one with 6.1, two other guys tied with him. Uh, weirdly enough, all power backs, kind of interesting uh, as far as Walker goes, though. Fourth best, which is still really, really good. Touchdowns, obviously Henry with 21, Eckler with 19, Kareem Hunt with 18. Zeke probably wins a best running back award because of those touchdowns, which would be mad L, because I think 300 yards easily beats three touchdowns any day of the week, because touchdowns are really just what happens, you know, with the offensive line. A lot of those touchdowns are probably goal line situations, whereas Kenneth... You know, we were able to throw the ball in more and, you know, maybe one of the backups got in. You know, it's just not a clear cut. It's not like passing touchdowns or, you know, receiving touchdowns. Rushing are, you know, it, it's not the hardest thing in the world to do. Of course, the most fumbles goes to Hikaru, but still not bad. Four fumbles, usually see that way more from a user uh, quarterback. Walker with the most yards after contact, though, which is pretty sick. Najee with a 98-yard run. And as far as yards per game goes, Kenneth was number one by 0.3 yards. Then we look at the wide receivers. Uh, Metcalf with an insane yards per catch. Uh, obviously, Russell Gage, really good as well. There's a couple of guys in here that are like that. Terry McLaurin, who is apparently a Packer. They went so went crazy to get him. Jalen Waddle, some pretty good numbers here. The best yards per attempt goes to Metcalf with uh, Russell Gage as the technical second, but about four yards behind, which is insane. DK just went off, basically the best wide receiver in the league uh, on, you know, at that point. Sterling Shepard, though, an eagle, really good numbers there. Christian Kirk with the Jaguars, proving everyone wrong. Uh, any other, like, kind of surprise names? Not really seen any surprises here. You know, a lot of the guys that I would expect, like Mechie, not bad. Uh, Jacoby Myers, that's interesting. Jarvis Landry. Uh, most touchdowns goes the cup. Average yards per game goes the cup. As far as run after the catch goes, it goes to Gage. Metcalf was kind of like a possession uh, streak guy, which makes no sense. Run after the catch average, we're not even close on that one, right? Yeah, there's so many guys. Well, maybe not. A lot of those guys aren't really, quote-unquote, eligible. There's like five guys ahead of them. The rest are all kind of running backs. Longest in the league went to Mike Williams, of all players, for 92 yards. Who gave up the most sacks? Joe Whalen, 19 sacks allowed for the Dolphins. 17 from Moten. Wow, those are I mean, there's some pretty good players on this list, too, giving up a ton of sacks, which is just sad. Uh, tackles, Perriman with 165. Uh, but Brooks, not too far behind. Number five, could see himself getting a dev up on that. Also, uh, besides Van Ginkle, kind of the most tackles for a loss for a non-pass rushing uh, linebacker. Sack totals, Joey Bosa with 22.5, Miles Garrett with 21, Max Crosby 18. Some pretty good numbers here in the sack department. Uh, interceptions six was the highest in league so we had two guys that were the top in the league for uh interceptions what about forced fumbles we were number one there for sure number one and number two touchdowns probably number one as well yeah, there's a couple of guys up there kicking jason myers is the number one based on the amount of field goals he made but as far as 100 percent goes still not a guy that had 100 percent. every single kicker missed at least one which maybe gives Myers a chance. I don't know. 
Best yards per punt guy goes to the Vikings technically, but Yorquez probably the real person that I would give on that list. And then kick return, punt return stuff. Uh, Caldwell barely the number one. Touchdowns tied for number one. Uh, kick punt return touchdowns. A couple of guys with some you know return touchdowns. Nothing crazy. And that is pretty much how it goes. What was our rank? So 19th in offense. You know, we play on lesser minute quarters than the rest of the league technically. And then 8th on defense, which is pretty good. What was our points per game average? We were 3rd in the league, which is actually pretty impressive. And then as far as points allowed, we were, you know, maybe 6 or 7. Some of the most important ratings that you can get, so fair enough. And now to the awards. Let's actually take a look at the player of the week first. And it goes to Ritter. And Allen, and then on the defensive side, Simmons and Baker. Some pretty good numbers, actually, from both uh, sides of the ball, both sides of the conference. But here it is, yearly award. I would guess Mahomes, but we'll see. And it is. Mahomes, number one, with Ritter, number two, Wilson, number three. A bunch of quarterbacks, not a single non-quarterback on the list. Coach of the Year goes to Arthur Smith. Uh, I don't see a Dingler anywhere to be seen <laughs> Uh, we're not going to care about the AFC awards too much because we don't really play that comp. Well, we don't play in that conference. Uh, Offensive Player of the Year, Kenneth Walker at number four. Metcalf at number seven. Defensive Player of the Year, Jordan Brooks, the full freaking winner. Of course, it probably helps that we didn't have all those superstar, uh, you know, pass rushers with those insane seasons in this conference. But still, that's nice. And Wosu, Sidney Jones, Jamal Adams, and Wolin all on the list as well, which is crazy. As far as offensive rookie of the year goes, Xavier Moore maybe would have had a chance if he got some touchdowns, but he had zero. So it went to Whitley over Sinclair, which is an, a kind of a mini win for us because Sinclair was the guy we've been really regretting not taking. And oh, surprise, the car is there at number nine. And him not winning that is pretty big because he won't get a dev up. And then defensive rookie of the year, Porter at five, Davenport at seven, and Northcutt at nine. Davenport had kind of a disappointing season considering he's already a superstar. I'm not going to lie. Hakara on the list? <laughs> Absolutely not. Running back, number three. Man, touchdowns are harsh. Best wide receiver, Metcalf at number three. No one else on the list. Buckley, the rookie, number four on offensive lineman of the year. And then somehow Forsyth. <laughs> okay, that's a random name drop. Uh, best D-line, not on the list. Best linebacker, though, number three and number four. I'm not really sure how that works. How is Brooks number four, yet he was the defensive player of the year? I don't know. But DB of the year goes to Sidney Jones. Does that mean he's a superstar as same as Woolen? It's kind of busted. If so, and then Myers all the way at five. With the volume he had, that is complete BS. That is so harsh. Let's take a look at our first of many, and we'll also see if we have any upgrades, even if we just do the training or whatever the weekly strategy you're heading into your first playoff game, coach. Playoff success often makes or breaks a career. How often, uh, important is your first playoff win? Um, that seems like the answer has nothing to do with the question, but we're just going to say play it cool. Every game is important when you're playing a playoff team. You have to bring your best. There are no guarantees when you play teams that are this good. You know, eight and nine Detroit Lions teams with uh, the fans still probably wearing the bag or at least having them in their pocket. <laughs> No risk, no reward, beat the Lions for a staff points reward. So you mean I don't get like a negative 10 to morale because I didn't talk crap to the Lions? Oh no, how how dare I miss out on those staff points? And then because I want to get some upgrades in, the focus of the week, man, their offense sucks. If I was going to defend anything, I suppose it would be the medium pass because the, nah, I'm going to say short. I'm on Ross St. Brown, could definitely torch us all game long. Aiden Hutchinson, who's an 83 overall, still a little bit low at this point. Average pass yards, they're actually pretty good against the pass. I think running on the inside is going to be our best bet, so that's what we're going to be going for. And as far as those guys go, I think those are kind of the focused players that we need to be looking at. They're saying we have no upgrades still. Is that is that true, really? Even after a strategy? I know you probably get all these upgrade points after you know the season's over, or at least a little bit more down the line, but... Fair enough. Okay, well, that is going to be it. This is what the team looks like for our next game, which will be the first game, hopefully of many, in the postseason for this Seattle Seahawks franchise. Finally in there, and uh, we're hoping we can represent decently. Obviously, we still have a lot to work on, and guys like Lockett really haven't contributed that much and could be on their way out shortly, but do we have enough talent? Depends on how we use it. If we throw to uh, you know, Metcalf... We run with Walker a ton, and then our defense just takes away the ball the way they do. 
this could be a shockingly good run, maybe even a Super Bowl run. We just got to play it smart. Don't throw too many interceptions because you know there's going to be a few. Don't turn the ball over too much and then let the defense do the rest. And we should be able to at least win this first game against a lower overall, lesser record Detroit Lions team. Anyways, though, if you guys enjoyed this video, you enjoyed the season, you're excited for the playoffs, maybe leave a like. Subscribe if you're new, if you're not new. Really appreciate your continued support, especially on this series. I say especially, I said that on the Vikings franchise and the other one, but especially on this series for a different reason, because obviously this is like the, the kind of front runner series, so I'm glad that you guys are still enjoying this, and uh, I am too, as we're still developing the team. You know, the team is still far from complete, uh, and us making the playoffs could be a formality. We'll see, as uh, this is going to be our first real test. Maybe follow me on Twitter, John Piquet, second channel Piquet plays for non-Madden content, which there will be a Far Cry video tomorrow on the channel, maybe 3 p.m. I don't know. I'm not going to upload anything on the main channel here where I'm going to be uploading two or three videos on Saturday. So that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back for next video. Maybe check out the Vikings franchise video that came out a little bit later to earlier today. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back. Uh, until next video, what an outro. See ya.